Water changes are something that are often pretty hotly debated in the reef keeping community. And in this video, we're going to talk about why you should do them, when you should do them, how you should do them, and you should be doing them. And hey, before we get started, I want you to let me know down in the comments, do you do water changes on your tank? What your experience has been? And if you do or don't, tell me why. So there's really four different times when you're going to have to do a water change on your saltwater aquarium. The first is if toxins have been introduced into the aquarium. The second one is if your water parameters are imbalanced or high, if your trace elements are imbalanced or low, and occasionally you might have to do a water change during the nitrogen cycle. And before you click off the video and leave because I said nitrogen cycle, give me a second to explain. So let's go ahead and dispel one major rumor right now. There's not really a lot of beneficial bacteria floating and swimming around in the water in your aquarium. The beneficial bacteria that are responsible for the nitrogen cycle live in a 100 micron like Oreo filling of a sandwich on the surfaces of everything in your tank. The rocks and the sand and the glass and the pumps, etc. They do not live in the water and doing a water change during the nitrogen cycle or any time thereafter does not remove 99% of the beneficial bacteria in your tank. So now that we've gotten rid of that rumor, let's talk about it. So the first thing is if you have a toxin introduced into the aquarium, if somebody accidentally spilled something in there, basically this is the idea that there's something in the water that isn't supposed to be there and you need to remove it. You can do a water change all the way from very small to 100% if need be to get rid of this toxin. And occasionally you might want to run some activated carbon at the same time to make sure you get all of it. There are even animals in the saltwater hobby that can introduce these toxins into your aquariums. One of the most popular ones is the Dolabella sea hare. Now this is responsible for munching down on green hair algae and other types of algae that grow in our tanks. So we use them all the time as a part of our cleanup crew, but they have a purple dye inside themselves that they might release if they feel threatened or they get damaged or anything like that. And that dye is extremely toxic to the other animals and corals in your tank. So in that case, if something happens and you see that, you're gonna wanna do a really big water change as quickly as you can. Now, when we start talking about water parameters, it's important for you to remember that everybody's tank is different. What your tank runs at, what you would consider high is not necessarily what I might consider high and what my tank likes. But taking your own tank into consideration, if you start having problems with phosphate going higher than they normally are, nitrates going higher than they normally are, things like that, you might want to consider doing a water change. And here's one really important note about phosphates in saltwater aquaria. Doing a water change oftentimes doesn't seem like it does anything for phosphates. And that's generally because most of those are bound up inside the rocks and inside the substrate. By the time you get the water change done and you give it six or eight hours for that water to kind of mix in with the aquarium and you test things, more phosphates have been released from that substrate and it appears as though you haven't done anything at all. But this isn't necessarily the case. You did remove the phosphates that were in the water that you took out of the tank. It's just that they've been put back in. And in this situation, you might want to consider running some sort of a phosphate removal media along with your water changes. Trace elements are another one of those things that a lot of people like to really heavily debate. And what I will say is there's a range that they should fall into. You're gonna have to find where your tank runs the best. My tank likes to run with the alkalinity around eight and the pH around eight. That's just what my tank likes. Things don't start looking as good if I move those into up or below those two numbers. So your tank is gonna have its own sort of sweet spot but your corals and whatnot are going to be consuming these trace elements over time. Things like bromine and iodine and molybdenum and cobalt and calcium, magnesium and alkalinity. And one of the easiest ways to put these things back into the tank without having to do crazy calculations is just to do some water changes. It's in the salt and adding that back to the aquarium is going to stave off the amount of time before you have to start dosing the aquarium due to coral consumption. And finally, we're going to talk a little bit about the nitrogen cycle. Not too much, just a bit. So if ammonia or nitrites during your nitrogen cycle reach the point of five parts per million or higher than that, it can put the beneficial bacteria responsible for completing the nitrogen cycle 
into a state of dormancy. And until you bring those numbers back down below five parts per million, they're really not going to be doing their job the way that they should be doing. So in this case, during the nitrogen cycle, it is completely safe for you to go ahead and do a water change. And it's just based on a percent. So let's just say your ammonia is at 6% and you want to get it down below five, you could do a 50% water change and bring it down to about three. And everything would wake back up and get moving again and go ahead and finish your nitrogen cycle. Otherwise, during the nitrogen cycle, you don't need to do a water change. Now let's talk just for a minute about how you should be doing this. And it seems pretty straightforward. You're going to want to mix your water at your home using RODI water. We're not going to talk about tap water in this video. That's going to be in a whole other video because it needs one all on its own. But you're going to mix RODI water. You're going to mix your salt. I have some sitting right down here getting ready to go in that blue drum over there. You're going to make sure that it gets to temperature. This is important and you're going to make sure that it is at the right salinity for your aquarium. And depending on the salt that you use, you're going to have to allow that salt to just sit in that container and mix for a certain amount of time. Fauna marine salt, like what I use, they say it's ready to go in about five minutes, but I don't find that to be the, the real case scenario. So I let mine run for about an hour, hour and a half. Everything is completely dissolved and it's ready to go. However, if you're using something like Instant Ocean Reef Crystals, they recommend that you let that salt sit and mix for 24 hours. Now, the reason that they do that is because they don't dehydrate their salt as much. So to keep it from clumping up into a brick, they add clay into the salt mix, allowing it to sit and mix for that 24 hour period of time makes that clay stick to the outside of the container so that you're not putting it in your tank. And if you're introducing that salt water into your tank earlier than about 24 hours, you are absolutely putting that clay into your aquarium. But go by the directions on your salt. They have figured out what works best for their product. Now, before you get a water change going on your tank, there's a little bit of prep work that you probably should do ahead of time. Whatever container that you're going to use, like I have this big drum back here, I drain the water in the tank into that drum so that I can mark the tank and know exactly where I need to drain the tank to every time to be able to refill it with the amount of water that I have in my container. And this is important because you don't want to be mixing water back into the tank and run out and then have to try to hurry up and make more salt water to make up for the difference while your system sits not being run. That's not an ideal situation. It's really not going to hurt too much, but it's not ideal. You're going to be rushing around, doing things, you might make a mistake, and nothing good happens fast in reef keeping. Now, the other potential problem with not making the amount of water that you change the same is depending on what exactly you're doing and how many percent of water change you're doing, you could affect the salinity of the tank. If you remove 20 gallons and you add 30 gallons of water back to the tank with new salt water, your salinity is going to go higher than it should be. So it's very important that you match the amount you're taking out and the amount that you're putting back. And now comes the big question about how often should you be doing this? Any of these scenarios could be a one-time use case scenario and you just do the change because that thing happened. But generally speaking, doing a 10% weekly, 20% every two weeks, or 40% once a month water change is going to be like the sweet spot. The people who have studied this over time have found that a 10% weekly water change or the equivalent brings out enough of the bad and puts back enough of the good that it won't crash your parameters, which is very important. You don't want to do so many or so much of a water change that your nitrates and your phosphates bottom out to zero. You're going to end up causing yourself more problems in the end with things like dinoflagellates, and nobody wants that, trust me. So what I do on my tank and what I recommend that you do on your tank is just set a 10% weekly water change sort of guideline. That's your rule. If you miss a week, it's gonna be fine. Just do 20% the following week. And the only thing left for you to do is watch that video on screen right there. I think you'll find it interesting.